Well, now we're uh, ready to uh, start uh, installing the uh, electric components into the uh, fuselage. Uh, I decided to keep the uh, stock uh, motor and go with a brushed uh, electronic speed control. I'm using Electrofly and this is a uh, 25 amp um, electronic speed control and um, you can use both LiPo and nickel metal hydride with this and uh, it's designed for the can motors like this and it comes with a little uh, resistor that needs to be soldered in between the positive and the negative of the uh, terminal post and this helps reduce uh, noise to the uh, electronic speed control so I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder that into place and then we're going to go and mount it into the, uh, the gearbox and uh, then we'll mount the gearbox to the, uh, to the uh, engine mount, run the wires up and then we'll uh, start working on the uh, battery box and we'll uh, modify the battery box for uh, lipos and the uh, receiver. Now that you have your, uh, your uh, resistor soldered in and mounted the uh, motor into the gearbox to straightforward installation. Uh, it's a good time to probably check to make sure everything works. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test just to make sure. Look, make sure that the gears aren't binding anywhere and everything moves freely looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, motor and gearbox onto the firewall. Before you push the wires through the firewall, there's uh, little plastic uh, coverings that, uh, that are there to protect the, uh, the connections and uh, cut these off with an exacto knife. We won't need these because once we push it through the firewall and attach it to our speed control, I'm going to use shrink tape and what's nice about the uh, this speed control is, is the connectors are already soldered on and they fit the uh, they fit the uh, the motor connectors perfectly and then it's just a matter of slipping some uh, heat shrink tube over that and uh, shrinking it. Went ahead and mounted the uh, gearbox motor onto the uh, motor mount onto the firewall got the wires pushed through to the inside. If you've never taken the cowl off before and you notice that maybe the prop looks like it's bent, uh, the prop shaft actually, it's the um, it's the uh, the uh, gearbox and um, motor. Well on the firewall they've built in what they call P-factor or the thrust factor. This has a little bit of down uh, angle and a little bit of right angle and what that does is that compensates for the thrust of the motor and when you give it full throttle on the ground the plane will always want to pull to the left if this were to come out of the uh, firewall completely straight the plane would pull very hard to the left so they build in a little bit of, uh, of thrust factor to take care of that to compensate for it now depending on the size of prop you use will uh, determine how much how much pull you have the reason why we kept I kept the stock setup versus going with a brushless motor is is all this is built in I didn't have to screw with it I didn't have to do any modifications up here I find that once I put the lipo batteries in the plane and use the proper prop the plane flies perfectly uh, plus at you know ten dollars or eleven dollars a motor uh, if you burn one up, it's just a matter of pulling the factory uh, setup out, putting the new one in, and you're done. You know, I've been flying uh, all summer with uh, a couple Super Cubs in the uh, LiPo configuration, and I have yet to burn up a motor. So, uh, they're uh, for a can motor, they're very robust. Uh, they're loud. That's that's a given. It sounds like a coffee grinder when it's flying in the air versus the brushless. But this saves me a lot of problems of having to uh, uh, design and uh, put on a brushless system and rebalance uh, the plane and stuff. So this is the simplest way of uh, getting, getting into the air. 
In an earlier video, um, I had uh, discussed on how to uh, modify your Super Cub and, and keep it stock. And one of the things I discussed is how to modify the battery box. This is a stock battery box. And we're going to be adding a, uh, this is a 1500 milliamp, uh, 20 to 30C, 3S1P uh, LiPo. And it will not fit into the battery box. Uh, in its uh, factory configuration. So what we have to do is we have to cut out pieces in the battery box to allow the battery to slip in like this. Now I fly anywhere from 1500 milliamp to 2200 milliamp and they both fit in the opening the same way. The difference in the batteries is one is just longer than the other. So what we're going to do first is, is there's these tabs up top. This is what hold the original uh, receiver and uh, with my flat-sided uh, dikes, I just cut these away because I don't need them anymore. And once we get these removed, once they're gone, the next thing we need to do is, is right here is where the landing gear fits into the uh, the battery box, and we don't want to cut away any of this the support area because that's what gives it strength but we do need to get rid of this uh, webbing of plastic in here. Uh, on one of the battery boxes early on I used my dikes to cut and what I found out is although this is nylon it's a very rigid nylon and when I went to cut it it actually cracked and broke so what I do now is I use an exacto knife and I just take my time and slowly cut these pieces out and we're going to cut out we're going to cut all this out, but we're going to leave this particular piece in place. So this, these two will need to be cut, these three will need to be cut, and then across here and across here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out now and uh, come back and show you how the battery fits. I went ahead and took a couple minutes to uh, cut my, uh, my battery box open. You can see here the webbing that used to belong in here. Took the X-Acto knife, cut this out. Then I took, uh, if there was any jagged edges inside here, take your X-Acto knife and clean them up because your uh, battery is going to slip up in here and you don't want anything jaggedy to uh, puncture it. And the way the battery fits in here is it fits up through the battery box just like that. <clears throat> now, uh, the uh, the receiver needs a place to rest and I'm using the AR6200 this is for the uh, Spectrum series and uh, there's really um, you know I'm trying to keep the weight as close to center of gravity as possible and you can you can glue it in here like this but uh, if you look if you read the instructions for the uh, receivers they're, they like their antennas oriented. This, this one actually comes with uh, the receiver and an external antenna. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your antennas set up so they're in two different planes. So one could be horizontal, one can be vertical. And I try to set them up at 90 degree angles to each other. And if I were to mount it in there like this, and then I mount this on the other side of the plane, I'm, I'm not really accomplishing what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the receiver in the box like this. But there's a piece of plastic back here that I need to remove in order for this to sit back here because I don't really want it close to my, uh, my battery. If for some reason this battery were to shift in there and bang against the receiver uh, I would prefer to have the receiver mounted up here on the plastic so the uh, battery can't bang into it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I need to remove uh, these pieces. Uh, I need to make two cuts and bend this plastic out or, or get rid of it so the receiver will actually sit in there like this.